And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. And welcome to episode 27 of the After Action Review podcast. I'm your host, Rod Rodriguez. And in this episode, we're talking to the, not the necessarily the author, but he's the guy that had the idea to put together a book called uh, The Fire Within, Shedding Light on Trauma. So basically, the book is a compilation of different veteran uh, writers and a the wife of a veteran, and they're all talking about PTSD. They're all talking about trauma, and it was his idea, having gone through his own personal experiences, to put together this book. It's a fantastic book. He himself, uh, Grant Rogers, is a veteran, a U.S. Army intel professional, and uh, he's speaking from the heart from this book. I mean, you know... It takes a lot to to write a book, takes a lot to put together the idea and to make sure that everything flows correctly. So in this interview, we don't just talk about the book. Uh, we're also going to talk about the process of putting together this book. It's still uh, a business and entrepreneurial endeavor he is he's engaging in. So uh, without any further ado, Grant Rogers, episode 27 the After Action Review Podcast. And before I go any further, uh, let me just make sure that you know there's links below so you can order this book. Plus, the book is available on our website, www.theaarpodcast.com. If you go to the reading list, it's going to be at the very top, The Fire Within, Shedding Light on Trauma. Now, without any further ado, Grant Rogers. All right, tell me about this book and uh, how you got involved with it. Yeah, man, so, uh, so The Fire Within... Um, all came about with, uh, kind of, kind of an idea I had to, to, to write a book and, uh, <clears throat> I was going to do it, uh, by myself, you know, I was thinking in my head, I said, oh, I'm going to write a book, you know, I'm going to do it by myself. And then, uh, I said, well, I realized that I can't do it by myself. And, uh, I even, you know, ideas started hitting my head going, going, going. I said, man. I called a good friend of mine, Matt Vance, and he'd already written a book. He had authored uh, The Funny Side of War. And, uh, I, you know, calling to pick his brain, and I asked him, I said, hey, do you, you want to you wanna help me? And he goes, uh, well, give me, give me the idea. I said, well, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of shooting from the hip right now. I, I've, I've got this, I've got that. And um, after I started reading some of the things that I've written, um, he goes, hell yeah. Let, let's do it, man. That's deep. That's some good stuff. And then, then that's when the creative juices started flowing. And at the time, I was uh, I was an intensive outpatient just because I was I was at that point in my my time in the army where I was wanting to literally choke out soldiers, man. Um, and I realized that that wasn't the way to be an effective leader. You know, um, instead of talking at the soldier, you got to talk with them. You know, and, and, and that's people in general. You got to give more of an empathetic approach. And so what I realized is that I was becoming one of those toxic leaders, you know, that, that the military sees all too often. And it, and it wasn't so much that I wasn't a good leader. It was, hey, you've got some underlying issues that have been filleted open because you're no longer with a lot of people that are nine to nothing and, and speak in 10 all the time. You know what I mean? So, and still to this day, if, if I've got, you know, uh, if I get around somebody that's like that, we're on an, we're on an all high because we we're vibing, right. you know, and then someone else who hasn't experienced that, they're like, these guys are crazy, man. Right. So, <clears throat> and in doing all that, I, uh, checked myself into mental health. Um, I told him, I was like, Hey, you know, it's been three years. I've been, uh, kind of denying this and I think I may have some issues. Um, here it is. And I just talked for about an hour and they were like, yeah, you got some issues. And I said, well, no shit. You know, that's, that's kind of why, why I want to fix them or, or start the process, you know? And so, uh, I've been on that journey ever since, uh, intensive outpatient and what it does is it, it, you know, it's got a group of people, uh, whether it's 10 or, or 20, and then we got different tracks. So the track that I did, Rod, was uh, combat, guys who have experienced combat, and then persons who uh, didn't experience combat, but they experienced a traumatic event. You know, so they put them in the, in the group, and it was, it was very interesting to see. And the energy and the shifts of the room and the, 
you know, so I started thinking, you know, while I was there, I was like, wow, if I start telling, you know, Rod about PTSD and, you know, post-traumatic stress and Mm -hmm. TBI and anxiety and depression, he may have a completely different opinion and he may even get triggered just by talking about it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what was cool was I was like, well, I don't want that factor. So what I presented to Matt was why don't, you know, we get different perspectives, you know what I'm saying? So that people can't argue with 22 people in which we got. And, And the 22 isn't, you know, because of uh, 22 veterans kill themselves a day, I'm not, uh, I don't know that I'm, I believe that, you know, I'm going to, you know, in our profession, we need to see analytics, you know, we need to see the, the cold, hard, hard facts. And if they're out there, I'd like to see them. But um, even just one life a day, uh, veteran or not, right, is, is, uh, is too many. So, um, so that's, that's kind of the, the, uh, the creative juices of it, man, and, and we wanted people to to be able to relate to, you know, not necessarily everybody in the book because that's not going to happen, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, but they can relate to one of them or maybe there's a word or a phrase or something that, that grabs them and, and sparks that fire within. And then Matt was like, man, that's awesome. It's even more awesome because what I would like to do and, then, you know, Matt and talking, he said, I would like to connect, you know, the civilian to the military so that it's not just for military. And, and, and I guess, you know, people are, you know, when you look at the cover here, it's like, oh, that's that's another war story. Right. You know, and, and it's not, you know, so that's what's cool is is even though it looks like that, that gives us a, a bigger platform to, to actually talk about it. So this is no. a, so this is a a compilation of of different stories related yes. to post traumatic stress disorder or are they yeah. go ahead so so yeah so um, it, it's a transition piece is what it is and and the questions that were asked you know we we came up with some questions okay because we know questions muse answers right so you know who were you before the military who were you after the military mm-hmm. um, who were you during the transition, how PTSD uh, is affected you or your views on it. And it's, and it's really just talking about, and, and, you know, that was the cool thing is like, we didn't in, like the military, um, you know, it's gotta be dress, right, dress, whatever. Well, we told the, the, you know, candidates, if you will, Hey, um, just, just write, you know, write freely based off of these topics and let's kind of see what you formulate. And it was cool to watch it be put on paper because in the beginning, it starts from the beginning into what I think is the creative side of the writer. And I think there's some healing and and therapy in writing uh, when people get their emotions on paper. And so, um, so yeah, man, so that's, that's what they did. And then of course, uh, you know, the way, the way we tied it in, there's, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, good psychology behind the book, you know, the science to the method. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when that's applied, I think the, the reader gets a lot of, a lot out of it, you know? So, um, so yeah. So this is a book that's designed for veterans and civilians alike. Am I Absolutely. For, for, for all humans. Um, actually we're going to, I'm going to send one, uh, and, and we're going to send one as a team to Lincoln park. So I'm, I'm going to get out there, get it out to some of the, uh, the radio stations that were affiliated. And you're referring to the, and for some people who may not know what you're referring to, uh, we're talking about the Lincoln park band. Uh, yes. their lead singer just recently committed suicide. Correct. And, so, um, yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the process of putting together this book because I know there are a lot of veterans like yourself who have considered writing a book. In fact, I'd say right behind, um, I'd say right behind uh, guns and booze is writing a book when it comes to veteran-owned businesses. Uh, vets want to, and t-shirts, of course. Uh, vets want oh, to yeah. write a book. Um, and the, their biggest challenge is, well, I don't know where to begin. I, I wouldn't even know how to start. Tell me about how you went from, and I know you got some help from your buddy, Matt. Uh, yep. tell us a little bit about the process that you went through to take this from concept to printing. Yeah. So, uh, so I'd stay up late at night and, 
I would just start writing. I'd start writing uh, poetry and uh, you know uh, rhyming and 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 some deep, just deep stuff. You're just and getting then, it all out. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I'm just I'm just feeling it. You know, I'm I'm vibing with it. Uh, my grandfather was actually a writer. Uh, I've never been a huge reader, never been a huge writer. And the cool thing about it is, is that you know, I spent about three grand uh, in 2011 when I got back home from Afghanistan. You know, my mom found me passed out in the uh, not a not a median, but a, a, a crossway in in the grass on the side of the road. And you know, my my arms were like this, and scared the shit out of her, man. And so uh, I, I never thought in my lifetime that you know, my mom would, would see me like that. And, you know, most moms don't, most moms or dads or, or brothers or sisters find out after the veteran has committed suicide, you know, or after something traumatic, even more traumatic has happened. And and that's something else with the book that we want to make that, we want to mend that gap, you know, and, and have the, the spouses and the, everybody understand well, so in, in, in that time, uh, my grandfather, you know, he passed away from uh, colon cancer and uh, he came to me in a dream, man, and, and was like, hey, son, um, it's not going to life isn't going to be easy, but you're going to do all right. And that was around that time frame that I had done that. And I was like, I don't believe in this. You know, I, he's this is some some hocus pocus type stuff. He's coming to me in my dream, this and that. And what's interesting about that is I called my grandmother and she was saying whenever you know she went to uh, uh, therapy what they say is that if you're not there in the present when someone passes they will come to you in a life at a, at a different time and uh, you can see that in Matt's story with his mom which which is you know a, a confirmation that, that that does happen and so yeah man and and I just I picked it up and I, and I started writing and again, I told Matt, I said, look, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to this. So I kind of charged him with uh, putting all of this together. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I, I, I was starting to quit on Matt uh, at one point. You know, it's kind of like when, uh, you know, and he was my NCO uh, team leader in, uh, <clears throat> at Fort Lewis. And man, it, it, it was crazy because he's like, don't quit on me. Let's go, man. Like, get your ass up. Let's go. You know what I mean? And so I don't I don't think if I, you know, if we didn't have math, then this thing never would have came to fruition. Talk to a lot of people about it. Um, I talked to a lot of people and I just think some people weren't ready or they didn't want to. And and they didn't know how to say no or um, they just want to keep their their privacy to themselves. Now, I respect the hell out of that because, you know, an IOP intensive outpatient that's part of the therapy that people never get. Mm-hmm. A lot of people never get therapy, but then they complain about X, Y, and Z. And so that's another gap we want to mend with the the veteran, you know, saying, hey, man, hey, girl, you know, it's all right if you, you get help. And that's how we want to bring this book to uh, tie it all in. And so, right. um, so yeah, about three years, man, it took about three years uh, all together. Um, at the end of the day, Matt's eyes were bleeding. Uh, <laughs> you know, he had a lot of volunteer editors. Um, big shout out to them who just, you know, were friends of the family um, or just friends. And we're like, hey, you know, give it your best shot. Uh, we understand we're not professional authors here, um, but we are authors now. We, we officially, you know, you published a book, a, right? self-published a book. Yeah, man. So. Um, so yeah, trial and error, we asked, you know, going through people had to, you know, the, the vetting process of, you know, the credible stories and who these people were. And that's a uh, challenge in and of itself right there, because you want to make sure that you're putting real stories in there. And of course, you know, there are some bad apples out there who, who will fabricate, who want to get attention. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can always kind of, you know, tell who was there and who wasn't. You know, and uh, it's funny you bring that up because, you know, in therapy, we had this guy that, you know, was a conversation stealer and he would pity back off of, you know, or a one upper. Well, you know, I shot two guys. Oh, well, I shot 50. It's like, no, you didn't, you know, and 
it's just interesting. And, you know, we pulled the doctor out, some of the guys who, you know, experienced, you know, some things and whatnot. And he said, guys, you, you've got to relax because that is his illness. I said, wait a second. So you're telling me that him piggybacking off of other people's, that's his sickness. He goes, yes. I said, wow, I never even looked at it that way. You know, I just thought he was some tough guy, but all he is is he's got some insecurities or she has some insecurities and they're trying to fit in. How difficult know? How difficult was it to immerse yourself in, I guess, the, the technical aspect of writing a book when the material for the book is so personal? Okay, so, you, so you're asking how do you, how do you mend the two together, basically? Yeah, because, I mean... Well, you know the the process of writing a book is 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 pretty involved. Uh, I'm sure it it required a uh, a significant amount of you know personal money that you're putting into this book to get it self published. Uh, there's probably a process in place for you know your responsibilities for getting the book for for your piece of the book's publishing and all this, and then knowing that this, these are very deeply personal stories that you're immersing yourself in. Every single time you're jumping into the, the technicalities of publishing a book, how do you manage that when it when it's so personal? Oh gosh, uh, that's a Matt question, <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll go ahead and answer. My opinion, man, I, I think that you keep it as raw as possible, and and then you there is no skirting the line or or, or uh, politicking it. You just tell it how it is. And, and that's kind of how we in, in, enter the book. So we were more focused on, you know, the commas and the, you know, the present tense and, and all of that versus verbiage. You know, the I, I think um, it, it was a typo in, in mine, even uh, QRF. We were at red con one. It actually is com. It's C-O-M. And we both know it's red con with C-O-N. You know, so a lot of people were like, oh, well, you yeah, know, blah, blah, blah. And my, you know, opinion on that is if you're so focused on that, then need not apply. But and you're probably missing the point. Right. But I think that the book is so powerful that people aren't so concerned with the technical aspect. But we were concerned with it because we wanted to do it right. We didn't want to put our name on some sloppy stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's a very good question because... Uh, you do enter that that process, and you know Matt had to read it. And re I mean, Matt's probably read this book fifty times, right? You know, from start to finish, if not more. Mm -hmm. You know, just going. I mean, the stories are in his head, man. They're just he had to go over and over and over and over. And he would send me some, you know, on the email and say, "Check this out. Tell me what you think." And that kind of talked about, you know, the placement of where things go, you know, um, Joseph Ryan, he, what he did was, uh, he was, it was, so he was in the invasion, right? So obviously we put him in the front. So as in going in the invasion, so that, that's, what's cool and, and, and tying it all in. So yeah, man, it, it was, uh, it was difficult. Um, but, but we got it out there and we kind of, uh, preface that for people who, you know, maybe technical and we let them know, Hey, this is, uh, this is us. This is raw. This is uh, kind of like a, a professional, um, newsletter, if you will, you know? So, so yeah, Ho hopefully that, that kind of answered your question. It does. Yeah. I think that's going to help. I, I think that's another issue with writing a book is you, you confront that story numerous times. It's not just, you're not going to write it one time and you're, you know, one shot will kill. <laughs> You're going to have to come back to it. You have to reread it, reedit it, you know, and, and in doing that, you're kind of confronting the same demon over and over again. Um, that could be very difficult for somebody that that's enough for, you know, writing a book is challenging enough for a lot of people that might be it like, no, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not writing this anymore. I'm not going to answer any more of these questions uh, unless they're, they're at a point where they're comfortable doing that. So now that the book is published, what, how are you guys advertising? You know, that's, that's another piece of, you know, uh, uh, you know, self publishing a book is you, you do have to self advertise. Uh, how are you guys doing that? Yeah. So right now, um, we, we've got some, um, uh, mild connections, uh, genuine connections. Um, nothing that's like, Hey, you know, it's going to get us to the top tomorrow. And, um, we like that. 
because it's going to last longer. You know, it's going to be more organic growth. It's not, you know, New York's best seller in a day mm-hmm. and on to the next one. You know, so we're, we're, we've got that that growth, you know, and, and that story and that connection that we can bring people in and inspire them to uh, to uh, spark the fire within. So um, reaching out to a lot of veterans you know, that we served with, that we didn't serve with, people that uh, we see hurting on social media. Um, we tell them about the book, uh, related stories, um, and, you know, the fire team. You know, that's kind of what we call the the, the, the group. And uh, we're just kind of, kind of taking over, man, a little bit. And uh, we got uh, some, a lot of guys working on uh, the Facebook, you know, doing some, some uh, running some ads and, and yeah, I. That out. And that's something that kind of stuck out to me. I noticed that um, you were doing like personal shout outs on Facebook to the people yeah. that were purchasing uh, the, the fire within. I thought that was a really cool tactic. I think that made it very personal uh, to see, hey, uh, you know, John, so and so. Thanks for buying the book. It's in route. You know, I thought that was a really cool touch, you know, made it very a one-on-one, a very personal experience, a very personal purchase. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just like in business, Rod, you you, you don't, you can't be a good business if you don't have that customer service, mm-hmm. you know, because people work hard for their money, you know, and the least you can do is say, thank you. Or the least you can do is say, you know, I hope you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Let us know your feedback or anything else. But if you just have people spending their money, Right. A, they're going to be pissed off, and and B, they're never going to come back. You know, so you, you've got to gauge that that interest and and find that emotion and just build that genuine relationship with them. Say, hey, books en route. Uh, the you know, or or you know, what I like to do is if you know, if you were a scout, you know, I told one guy, I said, hey man, we received the op order. Uh, QRF is spun up. You know what I'm saying? And and kind of them back a little bit or if you're in the navy this book is going to anchor your anchor you down better than any navy yeah, vessel yeah i saw those that was uh those are pretty cool uh, yeah so so that's uh kind of how i like to you know market it on that that personal touch and then you've got you know obviously we got people reaching out to uh to the media i know uh definitely want to submit matt for the uh for the Vetti awards this is his second book so i'm just kind of the idea guy i got a lot of ideas and, and like to implement them and so he was you know definitely the guy who who charged it and so um you know he's got some connections there that have uh have got it into the uh the pentagon library and uh working on you know that and it, it does it takes time you know um so uh, bill roush uh Executive director of Got Your Six. It's also a nonprofit. Uh, you know, he wrote the forward. It's on on the front of the book. Yeah, man. So uh, the, the the cover of the book, uh, Josh Aldred. You know, he's a, he's a SWAT guy now uh, for our National Guard, uh, but he's in he's in Utah. Uh, Benjamin Al, uh, Altinez. I, I, I always mess up his last name. He gives me a hard time for it, but. Uh, Anyways, he he's uh, his gun is is the camera. So he he does phenomenal work. I awesome. uh, definitely want to check him out, man, and, and um, check out all these guys. I mean, we've got one guy uh, got shot in the face. Um, you know, still with us today, thank God. Uh, we got Amy Miner. Uh, she's a, she's a spouse who has a. I mean, anytime you talk about the book and or you ask about, it, they're like, "Well, I really like Amy Miner's story," you know, and it just boom, just grabs you. So, you know, Brandon Tenery, uh, you know, he's working for uh, uh, Major League Baseball and doing stuff. Guy's got a definitely uh, phenomenal comeback story. Story, and thanks to Mike Barker of hero sports he was able to able to get that and so it, it's it's all kind of come together man and of, of you know what we do as 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 soldiers or sailors or airmen and you know the the big picture of everything with you know in your special operations groups and you know your logistics and your cooks and your supply and your intel and your infantry and your you know everybody and that's kind of what we're still doing and going back to what you were saying earlier with you know writing a book making t-shirts and uh, i mean do we want another t-shirt company i mean jesus let's 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 be original right um you know or or uh drinking or, or you know uh 
any and everything that a veteran does or a service member does, we've got to support it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we all wore U.S. Army or U.S. Navy or U.S. Marines or U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Air Force. And we all get that DD-214, man. You know, so that's the cool part is like this people killing themselves bullshit has got to stop. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think people feel connected anymore. And 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 we've got to mend that gap. And 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 so by doing that, we've got to go back to the sand table. We've got to go back to the drawing board, the ramp brief, whatever have you. Hell, we may even have to go back to basic rod, teach people how to shoot again, teach people how to run. And that's just called life. You know, teach people how to be a decent human and support whatever it is that they're doing in their lives. Well, you know, there's a there's a huge issue. I think there's a rift in the veteran community right now where, you know, there are some people that are on the side of compassion for veterans who are going through uh, situations where suicide has been coming up. Uh, and then there's another side of this, another another end, uh, another uh, side of this rift where these guys are thinking their attitude is man up, deal with it. Uh, yeah. I'm fine. I went to combat. I dealt with it. Why can't you? Uh, and it, I, I think that the, when there's a, there's a message there mm -hmm. in that everybody's different, everybody's different just because you survived, you know, four or five tours without any issues doesn't mean that the person who went out there for one tour and came back with an issue is any less of a person than you are. Absolutely. You know, there's different MOSs. And when, you know, an example to that, and this is something that I actually got into a, a pretty heated discussion uh, a couple of days ago in the Chow Hall of all places. Well, hey, give give that person a book, okay? I I, I really should. Uh, yeah. And, and and the thing is, you can when you take a certain MOS, uh, let's uh -huh. say I'm going to just use infantry for example. Okay. Uh, when you take on the MOS, you're you're taking on a certain responsibility. You know ahead of time kind of what you're getting yourself into. There's no illusion about what the infantry is and what it is that you're going to be doing in the infantry. Uh, mm -hmm. You're taken through exercises. You're taken through a lot of stress inoculation. You're taken to the range. You're, t you're, you're put in situations with your team to conduct rehearsals and you're constantly performing the same action so that it's, it's repetitive. It, it's second nature to you. Yeah, those that things, muscle memory. Yeah, that muscle memory. But those things also help you adapt when mm -hmm. the shit hits the proverbial mm -hmm. fan. I'm not saying that, you know, infantrymen come back and they're fine, but I am saying that they are prepared to a certain extent for those stresses. Now, albeit there's no way to properly ever completely prepare for, for war, for the, for the horror that, that, that war uh, uh, will show you. But then you look at a, uh, a supply guy. Supply guy doesn't get put through that kind of training. He goes to basic training. Let's be honest with yourselves. Nowadays, it's pretty much a stamp, check the block, and off they go. He may get mortared. He may deal with incoming. But you got to realize that in his world, that is the most traumatic thing that's happened to him. Right. That. And just because he's not outside the wire doesn't mean that his fear, his terror isn't any less real. That the people that he saw get hurt because of incoming isn't it, – it, 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 we, we can't say – that is not as important as his problem. They are the same type of problem. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, and, and I get it, there's a certain other level of bravado mm -hmm. that goes with it. I think that we, we look at this kid in the supply world and we say, hey, you have, nothing to, you have nothing to complain about. Therefore, they don't complain. They bottle it up and they hurt themselves. Yeah. You know, all because they feel like their pain isn't worthy of anyone else's respect. Yeah, you know, so you, you touched on a lot of uh, sore spots for me there, just because, you know, I, I got to wear both hats of, of doing tactical and strategic and not actually being in um, intelligence brigade, you know, and actually being on the line uh, for, for a good majority of, of my short stint in the military. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whenever I got to the new unit, they'd be like, Hey, are you infantry? I'm like, no. Oh, well, what are you? You know? Oh, well, you don't sound like it. It's because I had to shit or get off the pot. Yeah. You know, they said, you know, hey, do you want to be a scout or do you want to be an intel nerd? And I said, well, deep down, I want to do my job and which, you know, and help you guys out. But I said scout so that I could adapt 
You know what I'm saying? So that I could, uh, you know, run with them, be with them, shoot with them, train with them, live it, man. So if I didn't do that and I bucked the system, I wouldn't have been able to blend or give a tactical, you know, um, approach to anything when working in strategic, when strategic never, some of the people never experienced tactical. So, so that's, what's pretty cool. And, and so what I'd like to highlight, you know, on kind of this topic and, and that, that person you got in the, the, um, the conversation with is my challenge question then would be like, okay, so if you're so fucking, you know, hard, then what about the SF guy that commits suicide? Yeah. You what know you what say, I'm saying? Yeah. What do you, are, are you saying that they're, that you're tougher than that? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that's the problem. So, it, it's such a, it's such a ridiculous measurement of my pain is worse than yours. Really? <laughs> like, is that really yeah, an yeah. argument? And, yeah, and, and I, I think, Rod, when people first join, maybe they weren't the best football player in high school. Or maybe they weren't, you know, something, and they want to fill that void. Oh, I, I, I get a chance to be a fucking badass. You know, let me join the infantry. Let me prove something to somebody and beat my chest. And that's where I was an athlete, you know, and I've met a lot of ex-professional uh, MLB players, you know, that made it to the show. And uh, got cut because of an injury. Well, guess what? They chose the next best thing, and that was the military. You know, and you find a lot of athletes in sports in the military. So it's, it's it's a you know uh, very parallel there. And uh, they chose Intel of all things. It was either EOD or Intel. You know, so so yeah, I think I think a lot of it is is a lot of people are uneducated, uh, and then they get that brainwash. You know, and they don't know how to how to come out of it. And we're in a we're in a time now where it's a, a fine line between talking about it, bragging about it, or streaming for help. You know, and I think we all go through that transition of the oh well, where's my ten percent discount? You owe me something. It's true. To I don't want to talk about it. To I'm a business entrepreneur now. Um, I serve the military. Um, this is I'm using that platform to you know make my income. Or, hey, I'm a lawyer now, I happen to serve, and I don't talk about it. And that's cool, too. You know, so it's it's all about attitude, perspective, and really delving into that person's mind because it's kind of like a school of fish that have just kind of shot out. We've got to bring them back in and say, hey, put them in formation. Be like, hey, where are you at? You know, and, and, and something that, you know, I never gave credit to, but it was the, the female soldier, you know, the, the truck drivers. The 88 mics, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? People are like, oh, they're just truck drivers. Okay, well, guess what? If they don't bring me fuel when I'm out at a cop, I can't run the generators. That produces me heat, okay? Much less showing an empathetic approach with them of, hey, I'm driving a fuel truck in Iraq. You know what kind of anxiety that must give a human being, especially a female? That's going to create a, a lot of post-traumatic stress, man. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so we want to talk about this, you know, rah, rah, I'm a Billy badass, you know, mighty stuff, Yeah. but we need to knock it down a level and start, you know, using the empathetic approach that we're all human. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we all have different triggers. Uh, we, we all vibe differently. If I punch you in the face and you punch me in the face, guess what? It's both going to, it's going to hurt right now. Your nose may be broken. Mine may be bruised. It, it's we're going to handle it differently. Yeah. yeah. But we both hurt, but we're from both, the hit. but we both got punched in the face that yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, man, that's, that's kind of, you know, um, yeah, that, that's, that's a, that may be for a whole nother podcast time. Huh? <laughs> I think, yeah, I, definitely. I think we have another podcast hour with that just alone. Give me some advice that you might give to a veteran who's listening to this right now thinking, I've always wanted to write a book. I don't Mm -hmm. know what to do. I don't know how to start. What's your advice to that Joe who wants to write a book right now? So, um, you know, first and foremost, you want to make an outline. You know what I mean? But before you make that, I would recommend just start, just start writing, you know, just start, you know, getting that flow out there and, and getting in that repetition. So with me, for example, you know, I used to not be able to write unless I had, you know, a, a scotch mm-hmm. and a cigar or I was vibing with music or I was up late at night. I've got to be 
in the zone, mm-hmm. and I'm not always in the zone when I write. So, um, you know, diff- different different people, different vibes, different things. But the first for- and foremost is, hey, just start writing. Start getting your thoughts on paper. And if you can write more than 20 pages, then either A, you know, reach out to someone who's a professional and has done it before, you know, mm-hmm. or like myself, I found a mentor. I found my one of my mentors in life, one of my prior coaches, one of my team leaders who, you know, taught me the basics, how to clear rooms, how to, you know, basically how to wipe my ass, you know. So I said, hey, man, can we start over and you help me out here? He goes, yeah. You know, he didn't make it easy. And he'd written a book um, before already, right? Yeah. Yeah. He had written a book before. Uh, yeah. And so. And what's his um, name again? Put this, uh, Matt Vance. Okay. And uh, he's uh, he started Operation Charlie Mike and um, wrote The Funny Side of War. I want to say uh, 2013, 2014 time frame. He was still um, in between his, his contracting. So. So, yeah, man, that's that would be my advice. Just start start writing. Don't worry about the technical side first. Don't worry about start writing on paper. Start a blog, you know, on the Internet. That's a big one. And, that's a, that's and, a yeah. really important one. So drive traffic. I've but, just I just invited people to to do guest blogging for the AAR podcast. You know, nice. I love writing blogs, but I think it's really important to have more perspectives and help people. Uh, practice the art of writing. I'm like, write for write for the podcast. If you got something to write about entrepreneurship or or your struggle with writing a book or whatever, I'm like, send it this way. We'll publish it. We'll throw it out there and uh, give you full credit. So that's my opportunity right now to to plug that one more time. Uh, yeah. No. There you go. Um, absolutely, man. And and I like I like what you're doing. Um, you know, my hats off to you for. For doing what you're doing, where you're at, you know, um, respect the hell out of that. So, Appreciate so that. good job. Um, and and you know, just so everybody, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what Rod is doing is 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 uh, you know, you're kind of doing the same thing that we did with the book, you know, um, your stories. collection. <laughs> that's right, your collection efforts. There you go. So, so, so you're collecting that, and you're 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 uh, not only are you collecting it and saying, hey, look at me. You're, you're building that relationship with people. And so you, you're a part of the fire within. You're a part of the AAR. You're part, you're, you are being, you know, a, a warrior, a soldier, a, a man, you know, a leader. Whatever it is you want to be, you're being it right now. So that's what's really cool about, you know, uh, this podcast. And, and big shout out to uh, Devon Tannehill. Um, for, hey. for connecting us, uh, he's a great what a, guy. What a great guy, right? Like he's probably yeah, one I, of the absolutely. best people I know. Yeah, man. He is, uh, it's a shame. You, you know, yeah, it's a shame too. Cause we had a podcast that we did together. We did an episode. That episode was on a hard drive in a computer that just up and died, just wow. died, which sucked because it was a really good hour, but yeah, what, what, yeah. Super good guy. Super good guy. Yeah, man. F- uh, phenomenal guy. So. Um, and, 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 you know, I want to highlight that because we're going to have periods in our life where, you know, people came into our life, they're going to reenter it sometime. Yeah. You know, and, and I believe in that and the universe and how that works. And, um, you know, if you're going to burn a bridge, you better burn it real damn good the first time, because once it's burned, it's burned. Mm-hmm. Don't try and come back later and rebuild it. So, um, and, and I've learned that through experiences myself so you know when when you're and 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 doing business with friends too and 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 that's tough uh because yeah you know when when you when you involve money it it becomes funny money Mm -hmm. you know and and people have different lifestyles and emotions and all these types of things and so i think that in life things show us who's supposed to be in our life based off our positive actions and if you'll just stick with that network and you'll stick with those people, that's your that's your circle. You know what I mean? That's your drive. That's your audience. Those are your supporters. You know, everybody else, you know, you can support them. You can be positive to them. But don't try and rebuild relationships along the way, sifting and searching. Do something for you because, you know, what we have in this life has been in front of us the entire time. 
if we would just look up from our phones sometimes yeah and, and and realize it you know what i mean well grant i want to thank you uh for taking your uh take time out of your really busy schedule to talk with me today about this book uh tell us how we can get it how can we get this book yeah, so uh, so you can go to firewithin.online. That's firewithin.online, and then you can also um, reach out, you know, to any of the authors. Uh, contact at the firewithin. Um, dot com for you know the email, and then uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we're out there. So we got 22 people that um, you know, 22 badasses that. We're, we're vulnerable, vulnerable. I can't talk, man. Vulnerable, vulnerable enough. You. There you go. I appreciate it. That filler word for me to, to put their story out there. And yeah. so they're more than willing to, to help. Um, even if you don't want to purchase the book, maybe somebody just needs someone to talk to. Thank you very much for, for your time, you know, and, and staying up for me through our, our technical uh, difficulties. Too easy, man. Too easy. So, uh, and I've really, got I've got a copy of this book headed my way right now. Um, awesome. Now I can't remember if I purchased it. It's on Amazon, right? Yep, it's on Amazon. Okay, so yep, Amazon.com. Um, you can get a paperback or Kindle version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this book on the After Action Review Podcast reading list. It's going to be at the okay. top. So if anybody wants to purchase this book now, they have another route they can purchase this book. You can go. In fact, I have a link. Uh, somewhere down here, and then at the end of the show, it'll be somewhere around here. You're going to see a link, and uh, when you click that, it'll take you right to the reading list. You, you can purchase the book directly from our website at the After Action Review, and uh, you're not. No one's going to charge you any extra for purchasing it through the, uh, through my website. Just Amazon kicks me like two cents. <laughs> they kick me hey, like twenty cents, the, uh, and the that's from there, bro. Uh, but more the merrier. Yeah, exactly. And uh, more more opportunities to get this book out there. Uh, I'm a big believer in spreading the word, uh, not just the message that's in, that's in this book. I think that you and Matt are a message in and of itself that there are veteran entrepreneurs out there, vets who are trying and that are actually making a difference. They're actually creating content. Writing a book is no easy task, man. That's that's a no. serious endeavor, and you did it. And I'm pretty sure yeah. already you're thinking about book number two. Oh yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. And and uh, you know it it it's well book number two. You know with the idea, but book number three for for Matt. And uh, you know it's funny that you you said that. Uh, he goes, please no. <laughs> you know he, he was he was messing around, but uh, but Matt Vance is 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 the man. Okay. And I want, uh, I want you guys to, to talk. Um, and hopefully after you talk to him, you can talk to, uh, all the 20 other authors. Yeah. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, that, that gives you some, uh, some talking time and, and them go. too. And a couple more episodes. And there you go, man. <laughs> it, 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 it may take off. So, all right, Grant. Well, Hey man, thanks again for everything. And uh, I will be uh, probably touching base with you again. I think we got a couple more podcasts with each other. Okay. All right, man. Uh, thank you so much. I'll catch you later. All right. See you, brother. All right. That was Grant Rogers with episode 27 of the After Action Review podcast. Guys, check out this book, The Fire Within, uh, Shedding Light on Trauma. The link is – the links are below. And you can also go to our website, www.theaarpodcast.com. The reading list, it is at the top of the list. You cannot miss it. And if you purchase the book through us, through my website, um, they're going to kick us a couple of uh, kick us a couple of pennies, actually. Uh, but it's great. I mean, you're still supporting this podcast, supporting the cause, and purchasing this book. It's not going to cost you any extra. So you might as well purchase it through one of these links below or purchase it through us. Either way, get this book. It is an amazing, an amazing book. Uh, there's a story in there from Amy Miner, the wife of a veteran who who was dealing with some stuff, man. He was dealing with PTSD, and her story is it's something else. I'm, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to, you know, any spoilers. Uh, pick this book up. Check it out. And if you're a veteran going through your own trauma, you're going through your own – you're going through some stuff, man. Listen, uh, whatever energy you were going to focus on hurting yourself – 
build your empire, build your business, take out a piece of paper out and a pen, write up that business plan. You have something to live for, and that is your future, creating your own future on your terms, nobody else's. All right? That simple. That simple. And if you still, you're still not sure, you're still thinking about hurting yourself, email me, Rod Rodriguez at the AARpodcast.com. I want to talk to you. I will take time out of my schedule to talk to you because I believe in you. I believe in what you can accomplish. All right, guys, keep an eye out for each other. Take care of each other. Love one another. Don't do this nonsense about like, well, I was infantry. I, 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 I went through worse stuff than you did. Therefore, your stuff don't matter. Bullshit. Everybody's stuff matters. Take care of one another. We're all in this together, all right? That's it. That was episode 27, Grant Rogers. I will see you at episode 28.